Hello, I'm Jeremy Fleming from youractive.com and I'm joined today by the Commissioner for Taxation, Algirda Shemata, to discuss some of the forthcoming and current issues on the tax agenda for Europe. FTT continues to be a top priority for the EU and uh, you rightly pointed out uh, that in uh, June European uh, ECOFIN Council member states uh, confirmed that there is no possibility to reach uh, uh, an unanimous agreement uh, in the foreseeable future. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, quite many member states, uh, they expressed their strong wish uh, to go forward uh, with this proposal within the framework of uh, enhanced cooperation. And uh, since that time, uh, there were a lot of uh, coordination efforts uh, among those uh, member states. Uh, they are working uh, very hard, as far as I know. Uh, um, you know, some uh, member states, uh, they need uh, ap uh, approval uh, from their national parliaments uh, to move ahead uh, with, with the enhanced cooperation. So this work is uh, uh, ongoing. Uh, of course, probably it doesn't uh, grab the headlines, uh, um, but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, the, the proposal is uh, lost somewhere. Just before the summer, you, your department put out a communication on tax fraud and tax evasion and um, it was quite wide-ranging. I just, uh, firstly, could I ask what is current, what can we expect to see coming out of the department in the next few weeks in terms of that communication? I think that uh, um, uh, ta fighting against tax fraud and evasion should uh, become a top priority uh, in, in the EU because uh, uh, we lose uh, our member states, uh, they lose uh, a lot of money. Clearly there are issues with offshore tax rules and uh, we have learned recently that the micro states in Europe, Andorra, Monaco and San Marino, are in active discussions to try and create some kind of framework agreement with the EU and that would clearly have some impact on their taxation issues. Do you think that if the EU could do a framework deal with those microstates, that would have itself a knock-on effect on some of the other offshore issues that the EU is looking at? Of course, uh, we as a Commission, uh, we uh, would be open to explore any good proposals uh, for um, uh, making uh, uh, progress in uh, cooperation between the uh, European Union and uh, those member states, uh, which uh, those country, uh, small countries which you uh, mentioned. Uh, regarding taxation, uh, um, however, we have very clear policies. Uh, uh, we um, follow the principle of good governance uh, in tax matters, which means uh, transparency, exchange of information and uh, fair tax competition. And uh, we believe uh, that any cooperation in tax matters uh, should be based on uh, those principles, uh, uh, be it uh, small uh, uh, countries which you mentioned, uh, or be it uh, other third countries, uh, uh, some, of, some of which are treated as uh, uh, tax uh, havens. I think that uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, ideas circulating uh, around uh, how to deal, uh, uh, better deal uh, with uh, tax havens and uh, I said uh, well, several times already that uh, we should use uh, so-called stick and carrot approach uh, in, in dealing with uh, um, such phenomena and um, for this of course uh, united coordinated efforts uh, of uh, member states in treatment of those uh, heavens, uh, I think it's uh, is very important and uh, there are various tools uh, like uh, application of uh, withholding taxes uh, for payments to such countries or, or blacklisting uh, of, of uh, uh, such countries, um, but uh, could, could be uh, strong tools in, uh, in terms of uh, sticks, uh, while in terms of carrots, uh, of course, we should uh, look at uh, trade facilitation with, with those countries, uh, the better conditions uh, for them to enter EU markets uh, and, and so on. And this uh, uh, balanced approach, I think, could provide uh, significant uh, progress in, in, in this area. 
What, what's your impression of what impact uh, banking union could have further down the line on the future of tax policy? Uh, well, of course, uh, if we talk about the banking union, uh, so probably it has not much uh, uh, to do with uh, the concrete uh, uh, tax policies. It's more about uh, uh, bank supervision, about uh, ins deposit insurance, uh, bank resolutions, and, um, and so on. But of course, uh, uh, the crisis demonstrated very clearly that uh, uh, we need um, stronger integration in, in the EU in order to address uh, challenges uh, created by, by the crisis. And that is why uh, there are a lot of uh, debates about uh, moving to closer or to sort of form of fiscal union and of course uh, um, fiscal policy uh, is uh, closely linked uh, with tax policy because tax policy simply constitutes part of, uh, of the fiscal uh, policy. Um, uh, I would not say that it means uh, that uh, um, common taxes in, in, in uh, European Union, but I think that we are not uh, there. <laughs> Uh, yet, uh, mm, but I think uh, what is really mean uh, that we need uh, a much stronger coordination of uh, tax policies uh, of our member states, uh, and um, uh, uh, this coordination is uh, already taking place. Uh, uh, just take an European semester when, where we issued uh, uh, tax uh, recommendations to. Uh, 25 uh, out of 27 uh, member states, uh, so it was probably difficult to imagine uh, just several years ago. And uh, uh, I think that uh, this uh, trend uh, will continue because it became clear that uh, member states uh, they, uh, cannot set up uh, their uh, tax measures completely in isolation. Uh, from other member states, from uh, neighboring member states. Uh, there is a need to exchange information, to, co uh, to coordinate uh, uh, policies in order to avoid uh, mismatches, loopholes, uh, which could be used also by uh, tax evaders uh, or uh, to, to make uh, sort of competitive uh, disadvantages uh, to uh, other member states. And uh, that coordination, I believe, uh, will continue to strengthen.